Hello, everybody. Welcome to my presentation on living up to our human rights obligations. We live in the year of 2015. Our planet is facing countless challenges, persecution, conflict, climate change, and between all of it, we seem to be losing touch with our human side. More people than ever before are being forced to leave their home countries to escape the horrors taking place there. According to the UNHCR, the United Nations Refugee Agency, in 2014, 59.5 million people were forcibly displaced worldwide. 19.5 million were refugees, 38.2 million were internally displaced, and 1.8 million were asylum seekers. In 2015, the Arab Republic of Syria was the top place of origin for refugees. The Syrian crisis is perhaps the biggest humanitarian crisis of our times, and its causes are rather complex. From 2006 to 2011, Syria suffered from a severe drought, which is the result of climate change. Therefore, people were suffering from poverty, they were forced to move to urban areas, and in 2011, as you probably all know, the Assad regime violently suppressed protests, which allowed armed rebel groups to emerge to overthrow the government. The country is torn by civil war. The results of this crisis are devastating. 250,000 people have been killed. Over 4 million Syrians are re registered refugees, and the number of internally displaced refugees um, exceeds the 7.6 million mark. In the neighboring country of Lebanon, one in five people is escaping the conflict. More than half of the refugees are under the age of 18, and uh, more than 36% of them are under the age of 11. Amnesty International offers a sovereign statistic regarding the Syrian refugees. Only 2.6% of them have been offered global resettlement ever since the beginning of the crisis. This is a devastating number, especially since more than 50% of the Syrian population is currently displaced. We can no longer ignore these facts. It is time for us to stand up to our human rights obligations, especially since Canada helped draft the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1947. According to its Article 14, Paragraph 1, everyone has the right to seek and to enjoy in other countries asylum from persecution. There was also a 1951 convention, which is based off of the Universal Declaration. Its Article 33 stipulates that no contracting state shall expel or return a refugee in any manner whatsoever to the frontiers of territories where his life or freedom would be threatened on account of his race, religion, nationality, membership of a particular social, or social group, or political opinion. Canada is obviously a party to both the 1947 Declaration and the 1951 Convention. Now, every generation is faced with a different crisis. The generations before us faced the Second World War, Vietnam, the Cold War. These generations were defined by these crises. It is time for us to decide how do we want to be remembered? What will define our generation? I'm here on behalf of the Intercultural Dialogue Institute of the University of Ottawa. We believe that intercultural dialogue can help us bridge cultural gaps. In times like these, we need intercultural dialogue more than ever before. We believe that through peaceful activism, Canada can prepare for the 25,000 Syrian refugees arriving this winter. There's a lot of skepticism towards Canada's ability to host these many newcomers, but let's take a look at the Canadian population first. So in a 2013 census, Canada had a total of 35 million inhabitants. 
of which 23 million were between the ages of 15 to 64. The math is simple. 23 million Canadians between the ages of 15 to 64, 25,000 Syrian refugees. That means that 0.07% of the population will be a Syrian refugee. For, ever, for every 1,406 Canadian inhabitants, there is one Syrian refugee. You cannot tell me that we can't cater to such a ratio. So my main message is everybody can become involved. Through small gestures, we can stand up to our human rights obligations and pressure the government to also stand up to this obligation. Now, I have a friend who lives in Vienna, and in case you didn't know, Vienna is the capital of Austria. Austria receives thousands of new refugees arriving every week. Now, what we want to have over a few months happens there every week. You can't imagine how massive the influx is. And my friend, Caroline, who was an exchange student at UOttawa in 2013, was so kind to tell me about her experiences volunteering for the refugees. As you can see, uh, she's the girl with the funny hat. And those children are the Syrian refugees she volunteered for. She sent me a testimony, and I have translated it for you. It is very touching. I first heard about the refugee situation at the central train station in Vienna via social media. There were pictures of thousands of refugees camping out at the train station. Together with a few friends, I drove to the nearest supermarket and bought enough food and toiletries to fill our car. We saw many other people at the supermarket doing the exact same thing sharing their wealth with those who truly need our help. Arriving at the train station with the food, I felt very touched to see how many other Viennese had also chosen to bring food and toiletries and other necessities. Until mid-October, when the borders of Hungary were closed and the influx slowed down, my mother brought several kilograms of warm meals to the train station every single day. Instead of going out on Friday nights, I would distribute soup with my friends. My friends who work in healthcare volunteered at the medical tents, and my boyfriend is offering legal advice services. Many refugees report that they were treated like animals in Hungary. At some point, we came up with our idea of distributing french fries. It was perfect. French fries are halal, kosher, vegetarian, with our slogan, fries of hope. It was perfect. We managed to receive media attention and tons and tons of food donations. One day, the refugees gathered in front of the train station to sing together, thanking the Austrian people for their help. It is amazing what human beings can achieve if they work together. Helping is contagious and extremely rewarding. I believe that helping and welcoming the refugees without fear is the only way to overcome the problems of our time. Isn't that an amazing testimony? My main message to summarize is we can all become involved. We need to cooperate and unite as organizations. We live in a society of consumerism and excess. 1,400 Canadians for every Syrian refugee. We absolutely have the resources to help these people. Every small gesture counts even if it's small things like showing them where the supermarket is or buying them a bus ticket or making food and clothing donations, it all counts. At the moment, it is still difficult in terms of community planning because the government is yet to publish its detailed plan on how to accommodate the refugees, but that doesn't mean that we cannot become involved and help prepare. This kind of contact is crucial if we want to create intercultural dialogue and help shed our fears. Intercultural dialogue will help clear the security myth. These people need our help. They aren't simply economic migrants. They are human beings in a desperate situation with no other options. It is either fleeing or death. 
and it is time for us to stand up to our human rights obligations. Thank you.